I'm Rick Bennett, and I'm going to use Painting a Rooster to teach you the steps to build a painting. So these are my chickens. Look at how they're shaped, how rounded they are. Look how they vary by breed, how much the color is different. Look how active they are. Look at their personality. We want to get this in your painting of the rooster. One of the ways to build a painting is the all-in-one method. It's wet into wet. It's a way of painting plain air and from life very quickly. They use that a lot. This whole section was wet at one time from here up. And I took wet, juicy paint and dropped it in and it let it seep out. It creates gradients. It creates a lot of granulations, soft edges. Then once that had dried, I painted in the bottom and the, let the dry of the paper create some of the texturing in there. And then once that was dry, I painted in the land mass back there. Wet into wet can be a way of painting an entire painting. As it starts to get drier and drier, you get a little more control over it. It has a freshness and charm rather than a lot of detail and finish. Another way of building a painting is by layering. Watercolor is transparent, so when you layer over the top, some of the underlayer shows through. This kind of painting had cotton candy bright and pales behind the, the painting itself and that's just showing through in some spots as I dropped in compliments and other colors on top. So this creates a glowing color that's neutralized by the color that sits on top. The, there was a wet juicy gradient created at the top. This was dry here so that it ended here. Um, then I, because this is pale, I, I dropped color down on top and created the trees and did, did some dry brush on the bottom. This is another layering. It's a, it's a fossilized tooth and the under layer was very bright and vibrant colors. There's pale oranges underneath here. You can see the blues showing through in here, some purple tones coming through. Those were underneath and then I layered paint on top. And this is painting by sections. Each of the parts of this can be isolated and that's what by sections mean. So when I'm painting the reflective area right in here. This section was painted just by itself. This was dropped in separately after th this had dried, so it was separately. The bottom was one big juicy wet area that I dropped color into, but it was this section. On the plug, I painted just this side by itself, and the flower on this was done. So each of this was section by section. Now you can tell by the granulation in here that there was a puddle of water that, but it was dry out here and it would only go out so far. So painting by sections. You, a painting can have all three of these styles in it. You can start with a big juicy wet into wet all in one style and create the background of a sky or around, like we're going to do with our rooster. The background behind the rooster is going to be all in one wet into wet. You can paint by sections on top of that once that dries and you can layer on top of your wet into wet. Once that's dried, you can layer. So you can use all three techniques in one painting. Some artists will do just layers. They do hundreds of layers, tiny layers, and build up their colors a little at a time. So let's talk about some ways of getting ready to paint. I like to have big photos. Sometimes they're eight and a half by 11, but it allows your, you to see if it's at the same size. I can measure. I can hold here and see if I got that brow the right width, if it's the right position. I can see into the detail. I don't want to put all the detail in there, but I do want to be able to see what it is and, and know how to describe it and how much to use. So good photographs with directional light. Notice how this, this shadow right here highlights against this right here. The light curving around this creates a rounding and a shaping of the, of the subject. So good directional light is important before you start a painting. So how much drawing do you do? Well, it depends on the subject. This is the Noose River Cliffs near Oriental, North Carolina. The tree doesn't matter if it's a little bigger or if there's a limb in a different place. Or it, it's more important that I just 
roughed in the drawing and got the positioning right so I could evaluate the composition, but nothing had to be precise. There wasn't a lot of drawing required in this one. Um, and I could kind of, as I went along, ad lib as what it needed and let the painting tell me what it needed. On this one though, this is very important that I had a lot of the detail drawn in and make some decisions at that point. If this window did not look like this window side by side, then the drawing would, was going to cause me some problems. And there was some perspective that would have, happen as this section turned and this went back as there were sides to this, um, shadows that were drawn that or, and shapes. So I had to have a really detailed drawing in the early because later in the painting it's hard to make major changes in a watercolor painting. You can make minor ones, but moving a line from one spot to another can create problems. You can tell by looking at the painting that I made choices. You don't have to literally copy the photograph. You can make choices the way you want it to be. If you'll see, I took some liberties with the sky. This was a loose all-in-one, big, wet, juicy background that was going to be behind it there. Um, I simplified the, the pinaret that's right over here to the right so that it was simpler and not as important to me as the, the front is where, of the entryway. Um, and I, I softened some of the detail that were in these windows so that it wasn't as contrasty because I didn't want to draw the eye as much as it is. So you don't have to copy the photograph. You can make the painting what it needs to be to guide the eye around and to use whatever colors you want to be. See how I made this paler in here so it drew more contrast and made it stand out more. The great thing about watercolor is there's a history of wonderful art out there, not just mine, um, <laughs> that you can access. If you go to Pinterest.com, uh, and there's there's you're going to be able to locate paintings by people that are successful that gives you patterns of how to build a painting. So this is a, a one of my hens, Lizzie. She was broody and sitting on the nest. Give me the stink eye because I was going to go get the eggs. And you'll notice that there's, this is very definitely the focal point. It's got the biggest con darkest dark and the lightest light and the most detail. And then I put in some suggested feathers in there. They're a little more formed up, but as you get further out, they just become implied. There's a lot of bright color it's a it's a very um, happy painting this is a friend sent me a photo of a hen that they saw in Jamaica and there was a red corrugated storage building behind it and I just liked that the rusty and old um, red building and the and, the, and so I put vibrant colors in the bottom just because that's what the painting needed to make me happy so there again, the feathers are implied. It's talking about the chicken. I've rounded it out and got the shape right. So as long as you get the shape right and the values right, then you can paint a chicken any color you want it to be. So in the previous video, if you've watched that, if you haven't, you should, uh, we talked about the color wheel. And so one of the things you're going to use that for is deciding what colors you need to have in your painting. So the choice of colors and mixes, which red you use, which green you use, which blues you use, we're going to give you difference in the atmosphere or temperature of the painting. This is going to be a lot more vibrant painting. It's going to be a happy circus, bright flower arrangement. Um, this is a quiet, if you've got a misty morning, you're going to choose the colors that give you the, the suit the painting you're getting ready to do. So one of the things I would suggest is taking the colors that you've chosen and testing them and seeing if they give you the mixes and the neutrals that you need for your painting. So this is the paints that I've chosen for this painting. So you'll notice that my reds in here are mixing with the colors near them on the color wheel. So the yellows and oranges and reds are making a happy mixture right here. That's the analogous colors. I've, this, this yellow here is mixing with the cerulean, which is one of the blues I've chosen, and it's making the green. So the mixes between the yellow and the, and the cerulean is a really nice green that's going on. I've got the ultramarine blue and the lizard and crimson mixing to make this nice magenta. And then the purple that I've chosen, I've got a lot of colors, that's me. Um, it, look what this purple makes right in here when it mixes in with that. And then when it mixes with the orange over here, look at the brownish neutrals and the, and the grays that come in. So this is the mix 
that I'm going to use to develop our painting. And so we, we've got the, the compliments that we talked about in the first video, blues with a little orange nearby, reds that become neutrals, greens that are neutralized, and then we're gonna have the purple in there making browns and, and neutralized colors in there. So your, your complementary colors are gonna mix to make darks and neutrals, and your analogous colors, the colors within your section here, are gonna make vibrant mixes. So I've shown you what I'm going to do, but let's now let's show you how you're going to make your color test. So we're going to come in with my water. Get that a little closer in here so I can get to that. And what, I've got the all seven colors. Yep, seven colors. Now, some people would paint the same painting with three colors. I like all the colors. It's just what I do. So let's start with our lights because that's gonna be easier to get down. And I'm just gonna pull this out with a wet, juicy color. And I'm up into the camera. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, so, so I'm gonna come in, get some oranges. And you're gonna notice that these are analogous colors that are gonna play nice together on the color wheel. I just got some juicy big spots. I'm gonna come in with my cadmium red. And that cadmium red is going to play really nicely with this orange. See what that did right in there? A little bit of this orange out here. And then we're going to get the uh, cerulean. I see the cerulean is going to play really nicely with this yellow. Look how green that is. I didn't even get that out here where you can see there. You see cerulean is this blue. Look at that, that yellow, that blue, and that green, that's analogous colors. They're going to be happy colors. I've got my ultramarine. I'm gonna get some big swatch of that going down so I can show what that mixes and makes. Now, it makes a green, but it's not gonna be as vibrant a green. It's gonna be a blue green and it's gonna gray a little bit compared to the cerulean because it's it's got some purple in it and that's not gonna make vibrant mixes, but it'll be okay in there. So we're gonna come in our alizarin crimson through it. Watch, see this color right here? Now watch what happens when I come in with that ultimate. Look how purple it gets. They make a great purple. And while we're on the subject, I've got a purple right here, and it's going to mix nicely with this blue to make it a bluer color than just the purple by itself is. And they're going to look nice next to each other. Look at those colors near each other and pull that out. See when it gets thin, what it does? So it's not just the darkest darks. It's when it thins out how nice those colors play with each other. Now when I take this purple across this green, look how dark that gets the when it's in that green and in that orange. Look at what it does in there. Those colors are making your darks and your neutrals. That's nice. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. That's nice. Look at that, look at those colors. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I've got my compliments of my purple with some darks in there, my reds, I'll, and then let's get some cerulean over here and see what it does. When you drop that cerulean in the red, it's not gonna make it as nice and neutral. All right, ooh, let's get some yellow across here. Got some mud in my brush. So, this is your color test. I've played with paint. It's gonna take you a shorter period of time, but you're gonna find some places that just glow and are create wonderful colors. You're gonna have some neutrals that'll come out of this that'll be great colors just to, to in quiet areas. You're gonna have some neutralized greens in here. So this will give you your neutrals you need, your vibrant colors. So what I've got it already done is I've got a drawing down. It's just the outline of the chicken with the major shapes in place. I got a little water in the middle of that. Didn't want to. Um, it, it's gonna. The most important parts are gonna be the beak and the eye and the shape of the comb. We got the rounded body that's that is classic chicken, but the rest of it is can we can make it anything that we think the painting needs to be. Now I've already taken my big soupy hockey brush. It's just a squirrel brush. It's not got a lot of, of um, stiffness to it. It holds a lot of water and I've come down 
close to the body and I can come up right up to it. I'm dropping some big, I've dropped big soupy color everywhere. That's gonna making sure everything is really wet and I got a lot of soupy. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna soak into the painting, the paper, and get into the interior and it's gonna get it damp so that it'll stay wet for a while. Now, up close where I need some, some detail, I'm gonna get a smaller brush and see it's wet right up to here. I'm just gonna come up a little closer to the body, get a little closer in so that there's not a gap. And then these crevices that are a little more important, see how that water just pulls in because I've wet, it's just contacting. It's going from areas of high concentration filling into areas of low concentration. And I've got big, wet, soupy color. Now it's, start, it's starting to rise up. And so that's because it's arches and it's not been stretched, but that's not gonna cause problems. And I'll show you why once we get to it. Now in these lower spots, you're getting a lot of wet, wet, juicy color. And I'm looking sideways at the paper and there's no place that's not really saturated and really, really wet. So this is my detail brush. The hockey brush is also gonna become my thirsty brush. Now, sometimes if, I were, if it was a subject that was wetting just one side or the other, I could tilt it and let all the water run off. But since this has got water all the way around it, if I do that, it'll bead across. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm just gonna start going into these lower areas with this already dried back brush. It's, it's damp, so it's thirsty, and lift off that surface water that's puddled. And now I've got control back because the surface is not soupy wet. The surface is just damp, and that's gonna allow me to drop color in very loose and flowing, and I'm going to all these lower crevices that have a lot of wet into it, drying it back in my paper towel. I don't want to take all the water off, but I need enough to come off so that I have some, that gets me my control back. Now, because it's damp deep inside, it's gonna stay wet for a while with these lights on it. I hope it'll stay wet for a while and it's gonna give me juicy flowing colors. One of the things you do if you come along this edge and pull that excess off with a tissue, that's just gonna pull that excess that's, that's at, at the tape so it won't flow back in. You want it to be a little drier at the edge so that it doesn't push the pigment if you don't want it to be. So now I've got a dry, sur drier surface and I've got wet interior and I can just start to infer what I want this painting to be about. So what I want to do is talk about grasses. So I'm going to come in with just some yellows. And this, this is going to be bright colors. And that's going to be where my grasses come in. And I want to talk about light. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to have some light in the sky showing through or coming through its shafts of light. And where I want it to run, if it starts to get dry, I'll add a little more water. So this is just gonna be talking about some rays of sunshine, whatever is up back there. There's gonna be bushes back there too. Now what's gonna be happy is when I start coming with this cerulean. See how it becomes my grasses. And I'm playing with paint. There's no right or no wrong in your choice of styles. Let's just say you wanna be more firmed up. This style of dropping paint in can be done with your skies and make very photorealism. Remember the sky I showed you earlier? That's just gonna talk about some photorealism in the sky. It's not, it's, this is wet and juicy. It can be used for the back, it can be as the underlayer. Now one of the things we're gonna take a little bit of time is there's some, some crevices in here. So I'm gonna get an angle on that so that I can get in and drop some paint in right in here and get it into these little recesses a little more carefully so I retain the negative shape of those feathers. I can't talk and paint at the same time. Sometimes it's all right. And that, the great thing about feathers are it doesn't mean that there's going to be any um, precise shape. They might be thicker or thinner. 
I'm getting a little drying here from the heat lamp. So I'm just gonna get some more water back in just to make sure I keep it. These lamps are creating a little more drying than would normally happen in this length of time. So I'm gonna get it wetter. I pull back a little too much paint. Let me get my pocket brush. A little bit too much of that dampness. So we're just gonna come back over it and get some water back in. Heat lamps, who knew they would dry stuff? All right, so now I've got my dampness back in. And if it starts to dry in a specific spot, I'll work on that. And I'm gonna get some more flow. Notice how these are moving. Now there'll be a shadow underneath this chicken, maybe. And a little drop shadow, because he's right in there. And I'm gonna come in, oops, cheat sheet, with my cordacridone sienna. And look what that does. That starts to talk about North Carolina clay. It's gonna mix with that blue and make some darks that is gonna be really nice. That's gonna, and I'll come in with just a little bit of orange. Now what I'm doing in between is, because I'm gonna mix these, I'm just drying back my brush and then going into my, my paint and it's just lifting out. I'm not muddying my paint up. So when I change colors, you don't have to wash it out every time. You can just, you can just dab back, make it a thirsty brush, and just start back at painting. Now, this is gonna be red. So near it, I'm gonna want some greens because greens are gonna talk, are gonna be complementary colors to the red coming around the side, because that's gonna give me a better angle to come in here. Get some greens down in here. And I'm just playing with color. Just having fun. There's probably a sky back there somewhere. Look at that greens that's gonna be coming out of this. Orange in there, because that's gonna have some oranges and reds in the chicken, so I wanna have some places. I'm just playing with color. I know what was gonna work nice, where the oranges and the blues meet, they're gonna make neutrals, because you want some quiet colors in there. See that puddle? I'm just gonna pull it out. That's how you deal with your puddles. You get it, let it stay as dark as you need it to be. Look at that neutral that just happened there. You wanna lose all your vibrance. The more you move your paint, the more it's gonna mix and the muddier it's gonna get. So you wanna lay your paints down in a manner. Purple. You want you to lay your paints down so they don't move a whole lot. And where you think you want them to be. Let's come in here. It's just a little ultramarine. Look at that. Oh, yes, I like that. That's a little of that purple that was in my brush. And a little of that ultramarine. Let's get some alizarin crimson in there. Don't know what that's going to be. That's a rose bush. Who knows? And where it mixes with that green, it's going to be a neutral. So let's get some more of that blue. That run out. So just get some more mixed up here. Now, I'm going to look at my paints. Let's see, let's get some. Feel like a big old muddy mess. I need some more yellows up there. I'm gonna get some more of that blue and make some greens. I need some blues near this. Gonna help this along a little bit. I'm gonna tilt. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me some horizontals. I'm not gonna tilt too much because I don't want it to run over that leg. But I just want that to go to the left. Now watch when it goes to the right. The paint is painting itself. It's blending a little bit. It's creating some mixes. It's unifying some areas and making some areas of interest. Got a little dry right. See that's dry right there? 
So I just need to help it along, get it damp right on in. Let's try now. There we go. Is there any place else that's dry? Yeah, see that little spot right there? That's a little dry. I'm looking at my shape, seeing see where it's not quite touching the the outline. Now look how fast we've got a background going. And this is interesting. This I like this a lot. It's a little too purple. Evaluate your colors. That purple is a little too much. So what happens if we put some yellow right in the middle of it? What happens to purple when you add yellow to it? That's the compliment. That orange, let's get a little blue. Let's see what happens when we put a little green in the middle of it. There we go. See how just a little, we're calming it down. I'm adding just a little blue right in there. That cerulean, see how it breaks it up? Quiets it down. That red's too bright on the edge. Can you see that? Compliment. Um, that red, I think cerulean will help. Yeah, see what happens with that cerulean when you put it in there? I'm calming down my areas, quieting them down, saying shush, shush, shush. So I'm just getting some more values in. I don't want that to be, hmm, that's a good color. Oh, you can get some yellow right there. There we go. Yellow into that blue is going to change it to a green. It'll talk about grass. Bring that over here. Quiet that down. That orange is a little, a little out of control, so I'm gonna just get me a little blue in there. Ooh, there you go. See what happens with that blue and that orange? Blue and orange are compliments, and compliments say nice things. So I'm just gonna come up in here and uh, there and make another. Ooh, that's a nice color. And that's what I'm doing. I'm playing with color. I'm just talking about. It could be a rose bush back there. We don't know what's back there. Could be, it's my garden, it could be a rose bush, it could be a lilac bush, there's no telling. See that puddle? We're gonna take our thirsty brush, lift back, and we're just gonna lift that spot up. And we can back right up, that's a, that's a low spot with a puddle, and now we're erasing. Here's where the fun happens. You can come into these low spots, and you've mixed back some nice things. Look how I'm lifting back that pink that pink's just a little too happy. So I'm just lifting back and carving back out some spots. Now I'm gonna have in here some pale, so I don't want that to get too pale. So let me get just a little, there we go. Get a little color in there. That's gonna be a pale. I'm gonna look at my, photo, my photograph and I'm gonna see some spots where my darks are gonna be and where my lights are gonna be. And I'm gonna want darks in here, so let's get just a little bit more. Yeah, this needs to darken up because this is gonna be some white feathers. And already, just by having this, these darks around it, my feathers are there. The shape is there. So I'm just gonna come in and get a little more. There we go. So I've got some darks near where my whites are gonna be. I'm lifting back where there's low spots just to get rid of those puddles. And that's gonna help me. And see that's lightening up, it's cleaning up my colors. I'm backing up in some spots. Now I want to have just a little bit of, let's see what yellow will do right there. There we go. See, I'm creating a stripe. Horizontals talk about landscapes and create shapes and look what happens it's starting to feel more like grass down there now got just a little more of that ultima that, that cerulean in it and there we go so i'm mixing cerulean and yellow there we go now when i look, see how that that come up i'm going to come back oh that didn't work well that's not a problem i can lift that back out give me some water let's say out, out spot. Because this paper is really wet inside, I can come back and lift. Now I want that to feel like a shadow there. So I'm lifting and see how that just feels like the, the chicken is now coming forward. Okay, I'm just lifting out. That's gonna get a little bit more out of there because it's a little bit of a dot pattern there. 
You can take water and just use it to move. See what, how it moves the paint and separates into, into places? So you can use that to, to lift and move and let it make. See, what I, when I blend a little bit, that quiets some areas. And I don't want my sides to be too important. So I'm going to come over here and do my outside. Now, I'm going to crop this after I've painted it. So I don't know how much of this I'll include. So I've painted out further than I might need. And I can crop that in after I finish and decide how much I'm going to leave. So that, to me, is an interesting color. I'm going to get some lights back. Let's be a good side to just get a little feeling of light back in there. See how I erased? Just getting some pales back in in some spots. Get back a little of that orange there. And I've played with color. Let's see. You want to have the focus to be on the chicken, not on the background. You just want the background to have just enough interest to talk. Now we're going to do one more thing while it's still damp. This is one of my favorite things to do. So I've got some sharp sticks. And I'm going to come into my colors, my, my blues, and I'm just going to scratch along here. See how that stick starts to, to make some grass-like strikes through there. And it crosses and it, it, it blends this into the grasses so that this, the chicken is in grass. And these, because when you scratch the surface, it makes little divots and the paint goes into it and creates just a suggestion. The other thing you can do is you can come in and make some green in your brush because I've just about run out of my blue. Take a little my yellow. And I've got a green and I can just come in and where that wet went through, I can put in just some grasses and suggestions of this being a landscape. And just makes it talk about a little bit about now because I crossed this surface I can come back after this is dry and I can paint some more in there if I feel like I need to firm it up a little bit All right. anything that scratches is gonna just give you that those little spots oh yeah I like that if something looks good do more of it see I'm doing randoms I'm, do, I'm just making squiggles that and that's why it's great about this is you can't get too precise with this you're just making little suggestions just enough texture and that's the background for our chicken all right so my background is dry some of you will notice that it looks a little different now than it did before and that's because this is a new version I painted a, a very nice chicken I was happy with the other one remember the one we were working on that's the chicken that I formed up the problem with had a problem with the video so it uh, when I started the top of my head I had a lot of that in there so I painted a new background similar in, in technique so that's what we're gonna work with um, I've got a reference of a chicken's head that's going to tell me how to look at how the light hits the eye and the waddle and the comb and the beak. So that's going to be a reference I'll be referring to for close-ups. It's just a, a, not the same chicken, but it's got the same parts. Um, and I'm going to be using the, a previous painting of mine uh, as a reference of how I'm going to do color and form and shape. You can see how the pails here are laying on top and creating those feather-like edges. And the same thing out here. There's uh, uh, some cool colors down here that are going to recede and ra help round the chicken. And the pails here and the warm orange tones here are going to give you a volume to the chicken. 
So let's get started with the painting part. I'm going to be working with um, two sets of brushes, one for the, hold the pigment, one to hold water. Uh, smalls, they're number twos, and then I'm going to have a uh, some a medium and a slightly larger brush for when I get into the feathers. So we're going to mix some paint first. I've got the same colors that I had before, and I'm going to need some darks and some neutrals. So I'm going to take... Um, this is the quinacridone sienna, and I'm gonna take some uh, purple and mix into that kind of thickly. And see how that made a brown right there? And it's still, I want it a little darker because I want a, something closer to black. And I've got a test sheet here. That'll give you, see how dark that is? That's very nice, I'm very happy with that. So I'm gonna take some of the purple and put it in there, and now I've got a darker brown and that I'll have available too. Now, I'm gonna make a, a neutralized, slightly neutralized, hopefully slightly neutralized, alizarin crimson right here. I'm taking a little bit of just a green in there See how that browns it just a little bit? It's not quite where I want it to be, I don't think, yet. So we're going to get a little bit more of that green. I don't want to get too much. So I'm just going to keep adding a little by stages. Yeah, it's not shifting fast, is it? All right, that might be about where I want it to be. Nope, a little bit more. I want a neutralized alizarin. Let's see if that gets it. Keep playing with it. If I go too far, I'll get a, a brown, and I don't want quite a brown yet. Oh, that's looking darker. Yeah. That's not bad, that's not bad. See how that's a quieter version of the alizarin crimson. So that'll give me some test over there. A neutral. So now I'm ready to come in and start with the eye. So with that, I'm gonna go into that dark that I just made. I'm gonna take my water brush, and that's just for when I need just a little bit of water on there. I've got that. So I'm just gonna come in, and this is gonna make the center just dark of the eye. All right. Now, on the outside, there's a ring right there that I'm gonna paint in. So I'm just gonna, it's a little flatter right there. I'm gonna come around the edge right here. And this just gives me the outside of that eye and that we've got in place. Now I'm gonna come in and switch to, where to put my brush? My other brush that I just set down. Oh goodness, here we go. Well, let this dry a minute. I'm gonna start working in on that comb. So I'm gonna start with alizarin, some alizarin there, and I'm just gonna paint that in down here. Some wet, soupy color. It's a little too wet. Let's try that back a little bit. There we go. Some alizarin. It's just going to recede a little bit. Then I'm going to switch to my cadmium red and just paint that right next to it. See how much it's more pink? Just come in on the inside of it there. Right there, we go. That's nice. I dropped some color in. I'm gonna come down here. Just start to build up some pigment on there. Now I'm gonna come in with clean up my brush and get just a little bit of water because I wanna. Oh, that's nice. See what happened? That's what I wanted. Not too much water, just a little more water. And I just wanna have that flow. And this is gonna push some of that pigment back. And create pales. 
So I'm using the water to push back the pigment and create a pail that goes across. And I'm just gonna take my damp brush, lift out a little bit, lift out a little bit in there. I just keep dabbing. Might be quicker if I did. Got my tissue here, that'd be give me a little quicker. There we go. Now I'm gonna get some thicker paint. Drop a little bit more along this edge. Lift out that a little bit. And I'm happy, I've got a comb there. Let's see, I missed a little dot. Let's, let's connect that dot. So it's just gonna fix that. A little bit here could use that too. Now, I've got a comb. Yay! Little dot there. How do I keep missing little dots? There we go, touched it. All right, so this is nice. My eyes had a second a chance to dry a little bit. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of, of orange and a little bit too much water, so let's lift a little of that water out. And of course, I lifted all my paint out. Let's try it again. Yeah, I got the right amount. When you're working in small areas, you can just test on your test strip, and you don't have to worry about it oversaturating, putting too much wetness in. So now I've got the orange of the eye in, which is very much what's going on there. I'm going to look at the beak. See how the brown is, is the upper part right there? So I'm going to, just by coincidence, I made... Just made a nice dark just a moment ago when I was demoing. So I'm gonna come across right up here and just drop this out to the bottom here. I'm gonna take my water brush. I had too much water. Ooh, too much water. There we go. We're all right. Nothing. Now over the edge so I'm gonna lift that edge off and let that dry because if I went in right now where I came over the edge of the, the beak it would start to leak some color out there so I'm not gonna paint on that I'm gonna let it dry for the moment so let's move up into this area right here leave that for the moment and I'm gonna get a, start with a cadmium red. Just looking a little bit about that brush. Cons consistently just checking. I wanted to pail up here, pail on the inside there. There we go. That's working out nice. Coming around this way, get a, I'm gonna switch over to some of that alizarin crimson down here, and that's gonna give me a little change in color. It's gonna go round down a little bit for me. There's a beat there that comes right up to there. Oops, see that's damp? It went in where I didn't want it. So let's just fix that. We're gonna dry this out and let that dry. Because while it was wet, I didn't want to paint right adjacent, and sure did. Alizarin Crimson sitting on the outside. I'm going to switch back to some cadmium orange, cadmium red. And now I'm just going to come on the inside here, just on the inside right there. Now lift back a little of that, a little of that. There we go. Get some water. Push that back. So I'm dropping in water, pushing paint, getting a thirsty brush, lifting back. Let's see how I pull it back out. See, now I get my pails. I get my pails just like so that wet, juicy paint gives me the gradient. Push it back a little bit with water, and I can lift out and adjust that gradient to where it gives me that rounding like I'm happy with. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of this pail just a little water, and bring it up into here. So I've got the face. Now I can work on this after it dries in just a minute, but this is looking really nice. I'm very pleased. 
So since this is wet, I don't want to paint in this area right here adjacent to it because it'll all drain down this way. So I'm going to start moving down. I didn't talk about the drawing. Uh, this is a the drawing you want just the amount that gives you the detail you need. This is where that that f area of feathers comes. The, the wing comes down here and goes back. So I've got just got some rough areas. It's not an perfect drawing. It's just to position things for me. Now I'm going to negative paint in a shadow. There's just a where this white ends and the, and the next section of feathers begins, there's a darkness there, and it's just like a little bit of a shadow. And I want that to be wet. I don't want to get for it to dry, so I need juicy colors so that the lights on this don't draw it before I get the painting done. And I just jiggle the camera. Sorry about that. So now I've got a juicy, wet color right there. And I'm going to cut. Uh, right underneath it, and that um, alizarin that I made, I'm going to start that neutralized alizarin, just running it into this wet, and see how that starts to, to blend and push in that shadow. Just push that wet, pushes the shadow in. And, and but creates a, a transition dark that's really nice in there. So I'm gonna get my bigger brush that I had. Just get a little water on that. And I'm gonna bring this out just as I get a little more water in that. And apparently, I need that. There we go. Just gonna see how it spreads it out just a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to start bringing some of this out. Just using my wet brush on that, just kind of spreading it out, bringing it out in feather-like fashion. Something that just suggests feathers, talks a little bit about it without painting every one. Now I'm going to switch up colors. I'm going to come in with just a little bit of, let's see what orange does. Yeah, that's not, I like that. See how it comes up into it and starts to come out. It's kind of a bright, happy, fun color. I'm just playing with paint. If it looks good, do more of it. If it doesn't look good, stop. That's, I know that sounds silly, but it's, it's watercolor is observational. This is cadmium red. Look how it, I'm getting that, that multicolor thing in there. It just starts to feel like feathers. I just want this to come out a little bit. And notice how these, these shapes of the feathers are kind of different and varied. So I want to do that some, some of that same thing in, in the edge of this. Just keep, keep, get a little different thing going on there. Okay, what color do I want this to come? I keep, want to keep pale, getting paler, I think. So let's see what happens if I just come in and, yeah, start getting some paler colors in here. Water in that. And just playing. Just trying to make some colors that look happy. See, I'm leaving some whites in between this as I'm putting some of this down because it's going to let it sit a minute. And if you let things sit just a minute, they'll start to stay in place. And, and you'll have some separations that'll go on that'll be kind of nice. Now, this is a moment where I'll just stop and look. What am I doing? Is it looking good? Do I want to do more of it? Um, yeah, <laughs> this is, I'm happy with this. This is looking fun. Um, it's got some bright, bright colors. So I might want to come in and get just some shadows in there, some places. So let me come into this neutral and darks that we did and just put a couple of those in there. And just to create some spots where there's some value changes. Let this, as this starts to dry a little bit, you get some, um, it'll sit. So let's come back in. And I'm gonna just take a water brush. Cause I think if I come to this edge with just some water, look, there you go. See how I'm getting some real pails in there? If 
That's fun. I like that. Just coming in with just some thick, a little thicker paint. Laying in some shadows, some some darks and neutrals in there just to talk about feathers, to talk about shadows and variations. I'm playing and having fun. There we go. Yep. This is that dark I made, and it was getting a little thicker on the edge where I had made it. Now, one of the things I did in that other painting and I liked is I did some, I call them flourishes. I just did some, some line work that just, I don't know what they were. They just, it was a little fun little something that happened. All right. So now I've got this area up here. And what worked really well is if you get a little bit of the um, alizarin, and I'm just sitting on top of my, my palette where I pre-mixed it, and I'm adding a little bit of water to it. And see this pale pink? Those are the shadows I'm going to have in my, in my whites. I'm going to leave these as white feathers, but I've got to talk a little bit about feathers and, and shapes changing. So I'm just going to come in with just some sh some little spots that are going to be shaded areas, some values that change, and just get a little bit of something in there that just says that there's textures and things going on. Um, now I'm stopping a moment. Looking at this glisten, that's telling me that that's starting to dry back a little bit. And I'm going to firm up a couple of these lines. It may not be quite ready. No, that's, that's dry. Yeah, see, it's starting to get a little couple lines in there, some things that say changes. I'm happy with that. Um, okay, cool. All right, I'm going to come, now this is dried back, this is still a little damp, but I'm not going to be coming all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to start in, and I'm going to come on the back of that neck with some alizarin crimson, and just start coming under here. And that's that neutralized alizarin, that I, remember, that I used, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's going to be the shadow on the back side of this neck, and it's gonna be the shadow under this waddle. So that's gonna be a little bit darker in there. It's just gonna separate it a little bit from the body. Then I'm gonna to switch to the cadmium red right here. There we go. Then now I'm gonna to switch to some orange. Get my water. Just get some water here. Got a little bit too much, so I'm just dipping a little bit off, and I'm just gonna start coming into that. See how that's pushing that pigment up, that water is? Clean up my brush. Then I'm gonna come into these pails, and I just wanna, let's see, I'm gonna lift that back a little bit. There we go. Take my water. I'm just gonna see. I'm, I'm just pushing that back up. I've got some pails that are coming down right here, and now I'm gonna use my thirsty brush just to lift a little of this off. There we go. See, I, I got that gradient, and I'm gonna come in here with a, just my wet brush and just leave that pale pink right there. I think I want. Let's see the shape. I'm gonna evaluate the shape here. I need this to round around, so I'm gonna come in just a little bit of that pink. And I'm gonna just come in with just a hint 
a couple of these spots, just like I did on the tail feathers, just a little bit of talk about value changes. And I'm gonna leave that. This is a little cotton candy. Now, down here, see that very, didn't vary very much. So I'm gonna come in, let's see what happens if I get a little orange, yeah. A little orange in that. See that broke that up there. Um, I'm gonna pretty much leave the rest of it though. That I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna come down into the under part. Now up close, how much value change do I need? That little thing there that I did right there. I'm gonna do this right underneath to separate this back part where the where the wings and the feathers have a little bit of a shadow. And I need to do this fairly quickly because it's gonna start drying on me because this is some dry paper and that lights for making it. Then I'm gonna come in with that neutralized alizarin that we mixed, remember that? That's what we have, we'll put that right in here and that's just gonna create a little separation there. I'm gonna start thinning it out. Create a little bottom for the chicken. I just hit the camera again, sorry. I'm gonna switch now as I'm coming forward to the, the lizard crimson. But I'm gonna thin it out a little bit so it's not so bright. There we go. See, I'm getting a gradient as it goes from the pale pinkish color to the. I might want a little bit more. Let's see if I can get some, yeah, there we go. Just a little more toned down down here. There, see that's a little more brown. That's gonna send it under because it's not so vibrant. See how that lifts those little white edges there? I'm gonna reduce it just a little bit, but I'm gonna leave those because I like those. So that brings me down to the legs. Now the legs need to be darker because this one's on the far side of the chicken. So I got a color change. So it sends it back to the far side. That, that color changed. And actually this whole side is in a shadow. Now the legs though are, because it's right up close to the chicken, it's in a shadow. But now the legs, as they go down, start to come out from out of that shadow. So I'm gonna go on the far, we're gonna have a, a directional light. So this will be dark. Then we're gonna come in, let's try that alizarin, that neutralized alizarin I created. Yeah, that, that'll be nice. Now this grass is in here. So let's just talk about where the, that leg kind of goes into the grasses. So you don't want to stop. You don't want to have a sudden stop. All right, so this one is gonna have some of that same things going on. I'm gonna have some dark up here. Yep. But it's, it's on the same side as the chicken, uh, uh, this side of the chicken. So I'm just gonna start with a dark on this side and a dark on the underside, skip over a little of this grass here. Remember where I left? Got some negative space for some grasses. So I'm just gonna talk about grasses being there. Then I wanna come in with my neutralized alizarin on this front side. I just bring that up. Gonna be a little careful with this negative space that's gonna be my grass because of the legs being in the in the grass that's very pink 
So what we're gonna do is let's get a little, let's tone that down. This bottom's all just a little, so we're gonna come in with a little bit of compliment. There we go. A little green. And just brown this up a little bit. Just taking a little bit of green. Not too thick. Just browning some of that pink up a little bit because so, it's on the underside. Let's see if I broke that edge right there. I'm just going to come in and just lift that back. I could scrub on it with a brush if I needed to, but that's going to be all right. So now I'm going to go evaluate. What does this, what does this chicken need? Okay, I'm wanting, it just, it's got a curve there I'm not happy with. So I'm going to get a little bit of cadmium and just drop that down a little further. So that'll break this up a little bit. This is layering on top of that dry. So I'm just putting some feather-like textures a little further down. You can do that while it's dry and it won't flow together so much. Now I'm gonna come back up and fix that beak. Um, I need to, I'm gonna teach you a new trick. There is, there we go, sorry. It's looking for my X-Acto blade. This pink right here is not where I want it, so I'm just gonna scratch it with my X-Acto blade and it's gonna lift out a little of that color on the top. Just gonna scratch it off because it's not where I want it. See how that softened it? That's nice, very happy with that. I'm gonna come in with my dark that I created earlier and water brush. I'm just gonna come in and firm up where this comes, this beak comes in and where it curves around right here. This is my water brush. Got too much water and it's got pink in it. Clean it out, clean it out. Okay. There we go. There we have a beak. Now, this area right in here needs a, just to a, be attached to the head. Looks like it's coming a little loose. So I'm gonna come in here and just drop in a little bit of a shadow. Get a little bit of water right there and just blend it just a little bit. And that's gonna, see how that rounds that around? Gives me a little bit of a, a, a turn because as objects turn away from the light, uh, it they it rounds them under. I could use a little of that right here as well. Just a little bit of a shadow. Could get a little drop shadow down here. That's gonna. than I thought. Okay, so now under the eye right there, there's that, there's a secondary little area right in here that I just, I don't know, had the right amount, the right amount of, I get just a little bit of that drawn in. And I need to firm up a little bit Brush this cadmium right in here. I want that to, to go down a little bit. Too much water. There we go. Just a little bit of cadmium is going to send that back.
round that area right in there. And I think we have a good chicken. Yay. Um, that could use a little more color right there. So as you finish a painting, I usually sit it off to the side and look at it for a couple days. Just to see what if there's something that bothers me at some spots, some things that are going on that's not quite like I can push this back a little bit with a little bit of value. So I switched that to orange and that was a good decision because now it broke up some of that pink. Get a little bit more right in there. And we have the chicken. No, I'm happy with that chicken. The next video we're going to be doing is painting from life, plein air painting. So watch for that video coming. So here's the final painting. I've got a mat board here and I used it to adjust just how much of the background needed to be included for it to look proper. So the takeaway is have a good photo to work from with light and also that shows you good detail. Draw as much as you need to keep this to give you good shapes, perspectives, as much detail as needed. Have a plan of how you progress your painting, but watch what the watercolor is doing and adapt as you go along. You can develop by sections, all in ones, or layer on top. Watch for our next video. It's going to be on how to plein air paint in life.